Should the Philippines be interfered with by the West? Uh, I have to say with Duterte, the Western media um, were on a footing of negativity from day one. Um, you've got to understand how some of this fits together. Um, you look at the Aquinos and how they're linked with the US. Uh, you look at how um, oh, what's that? Arreo was, I believe, Harvard. Um, what's that other guy that become the the mayor of Manila? Uh, another president also went to Harvard. They've got very, very strong U.S. links. Now, they also have property in Hawaii, for example. Um, Irap, Irap went to Harvard, Harvard, I believe. So the point is, they like to be able to have this connection. Um, I don't know how much of it is actually positive for the Philippines. Um, I know the Philippi the US, um, others will say, oh, well, we do great stuff for them and all this sort of stuff. But the reality is, it depends how you look at things. Um, if you look at how the Philippines was used for R&R &R, um, and the amount of children that that brought and the rise of the prostitution industry in the Philippines, then the US was not good for those things. Um, it brought in money, but it also brought in a lot of negative stuff with it as well. So you have to look and weigh up the options. And if you're a Filipino, you've got to understand that they can sometimes see it from a completely different perspective to the way you are. And I know I'm going to get negative comments on this because instantly you've done exactly what the Filipinos are doing. It's only taking one viewpoint. You've got to analyze everything. And it's a bit like the EU being told to get stuffed. Um, I would agree with Duterte. I don't think the EU actually does a lot for the Philippines. But at the same time, they have invested some money with renewable energy and things. But I don't think we trade enough with the Philippines to really have a big enough um, value of interference. And also, we don't sit and ask the Philippines what it thinks what we are doing in Europe. In the same way, the US wouldn't like it. Um, so from that point of view, I would quite simply say the Philippines got to make its own decisions. Historically, there has always been bloodshed in major change. The US War of Independence is still celebrated. It wasn't done with a simple handshake over a cup of tea. The UK becoming the UK was not a simple uh, sitting around having a cup of tea. The wars in Europe that formed these countries was not based on people discussing things democratically, etc. These things were created by war. They were created by bloodshed. They were created by change. And although people will say, well, you know, in a modern world, but a lot of these com uh, countries have not gone through the same transitions. As such, they don't really have it. They haven't had that change that we have had. Um, the Middle East, for example, there's been a lot of puppet um, governments put together by the West. Um, a lot of people don't even understand that Iraq was actually democratic when the British left it because it was part of the British Empire. There's a lot of stuff that goes on that people aren't aware of historically. So should Western countries get involved in the Philippines? I would say it's none of our business. Simple as that. We have no right to dictate to other people when we've got wars ongoing in other countries. Um, but the human rights issues and Delima, um, I think it's Delima. Somebody did post a name earlier. Um, I, I'm seeing constant flows of stuff in Facebook from different people, and I know some people that actually know the woman. Um, I would actually say with that is that's for the Philippines to deal with. It doesn't matter we like it or not. It's not our country. It's not for us to decide. And I know somebody's already mentioned, well, why she lost favor? Well, it's quite simple. She's the one that pushes human rights um, against the Turkey. So as for, as the most vocal person, as I think it's the Japanese saying with the um, males, um, the, 
the you know the nail that st stands proudest gets hit first. It's exactly that. Um, she stands out, but obviously, obviously she stands out. It's not just she she's there confronting Duterte, but also a lot of the criminal activities in the Philippines are all tied together. You know, with politi politics, police, etc. That's what Duterte is trying to change, and for so long it's been so open. I've seen police come and pick money up, um, protection money, etc., in bet money from the cockfightings, illegal cockfighting pits. Um, it's not the local police that get that money. I'll tell you that now. It goes up the food chain. If you look at um, ERAP and the bingo, because what they do is they put the numbers in the bottle, ask, see how much money he was picking up on that, because that was one of his downfalls. He tried to kill the guy that was actually running it all. Um, there's a lot more going on than hits the media. At the moment, all you're seeing is, oh, this woman's just being targeted. I don't think she's just being targeted. She's being targeted because, A, she's easy to bring down because she's got so much stuff in her history uh, and people are quite happy to bring forward and say X, Y, Z. But, B, she's also tried to bring down Duterte. So, instantly... He's getting allies that may not have been allies before because they're now seeing that A, he is now the Philippines president, but B, they need to show their allegiance and that they're friends with him and they will do it. It's as simple as that. It can't be any more simple than that. Um, that's how politics works. It's, in the UK system, you will see politicians get a real chip on their shoulder when they get involved in a scandal because. Yesterday had three, four hundred friends. Today they only have their mother and their cat. <laughs> because politically people do that. They move away. They leave you standing there to take the blame for everything. Welcome to politics. Um, but yeah, I think just wait and see. And we did say six months. Well, I said six months. Give them six months to see where things go. At the moment, it's still early days. What you're seeing is things start to move up the food chain. You, start, you started off at street level and working its way up. Um, will there be more high profile people arrested, etc.? I would say wait and see. I can't really comment because right now I'm not sure where he actually wants to be politically, long term. Um, it's the same as the outburst that he does, you know, to Turkey. He just says it, what he's feeling at that time, I think. I don't think he actually sits there and thinks about what he's going to say. doesn't mean he's got a major issue with anybody, but if somebody says, you must do this, he, he just gives it, you know, get stuff. It's not your country. And then people go, oh, he's upset the, the um, world, world community. Um, it's a bit like me coming in your house and telling you to change your TV channel and switch your aircon off and things like that. You wouldn't like it. And one of the things that Duterte understands is the Philippines has been seen for a long time as subservient. If you go to the Middle East, the people are not the people running the show. They are generally working the kitchens, the waiters, they're just general domestic staff. China, Hong Kong, domestic staff. Shipping, they're the engineers, they're working on the ships. But how many actually control the ships? How many are captains? This is what I'm talking about. And Duterte understands that it needs to stop producing workers and start producing leaders. Or at least start producing leaders um, so it can develop its own industries, its own infrastructure, its own uh, world place in the market. And I know from dealing with things in the Philippines myself, it's very difficult from a business perspective to do something right because as soon as you have a fantastic idea somebody will come in and take it from you because they have the money, they have the power, they have their influence and they have the corruption. That is the reality. If he stems that down more people start developing businesses and it's not just these people that sit on the top and just take money off everything, you know, the, the people that control all the infrastructure because uh, we have the same problems in Spain. The power is controlled in Spain. This is why solar hasn't taken off. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking if solar production was huge in Spain, 
its electricity cost could be down to virtually zero. Its electricity cost down to virtually zero means its manufacturing can go up. But it's controlled at the top. Philippines is suffering with the same, and this is why change has to happen. If it doesn't, it's not going to be the next uh, Macau. It ain't going to be the next Hong Kong. Uh, it's not going to be the next Singapore. It's not going to be anything different. It'll be same old, same old. So I know a lot of people are complaining. Well, I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with that. Blah blah blah. But change has had to happen. Thanks for watching.